the women CEOs contribute to SDG on Global Stage Talk. It is a great pleasure to introduce to you to our facilitator today, Ms. Irene Natividad. You probably recognize her as one of our panelists earlier this conference. Irene Natividad is currently the president of Global Summit of Women. She is a former board director of the Sally May Corporation. She was a commissioner on the National Association of Board of Directors Blue Ribbon Commission on Board Diversity. Among other recognition, she was named as one of the 21 leaders of the 21st century and also as one of the most powerful women in America. It is a great honor to have you here with us today. May I please invite you to uh, facilitate the talk for us today. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could I have your attention, please? We have an exciting program. I'm Irene Natividad, president of the Global Summit of Women. And today, we're going to be presenting an excellent uh, program and presentation from two outstanding women CEOs. And our goal is for their presentations on how women executives can meet SDG goals. So let me begin by introducing them to you. Um, one of them you know very well. Uh, she is the former Minister of Tourism and Sports, Kopkarn Watanabarankul. Um, please welcome her. She's currently CEO of Toshiba, uh, no, chair of Toshiba Corporation. Um, and, and prior to that, her training has been tremendous. I was reading her bio and I found that she had training in architecture, but also business, but also a stint with defense. So she is a well-rounded Renaissance woman who is now <laughs> also uh, running a company. Um, joining her this afternoon is Myrna Yao. Um, she is the CEO of Richwell Trading Corporation from the Philippines. Um, like the former Minister of uh, Tourism and Sports, she was also a government official in that she chaired the Philippine Commission on the Status of Women from 2004 to 2010. Um, she has been much awarded for all of her efforts to organize local organizations, national, and even I gave her an award, the Global Summit of Women Entrepreneurship Award, um, because of her innovative approach to starting and supporting small business. So please give her a warm welcome. <clears throat> So the way we will begin is I'd like to hear, I'd like for you to hear from them their own journey and their own priorities. So let's begin uh, with the former minister, Kop Karn, um, who will present to you her thoughts on entrepreneurship, leadership in general. Thank you so much. Okay. I, I have 15 minutes. Or you have 15 minutes. Around 10 to 15 minutes first. Um, I'm just a normal woman. Can you hear me? Ah, okay, Ka. Well, um, I would like to ask you three questions. Why sustainable goal? Because we are asked by UN to do it, so we have to do it or you believe in it? The answer will be in your heart. Number two, why BPW? Why it is our duty? And number three, why it has to be Thailand? 
Number one, definitely, to me, sustainable development goal is not a trend, it's life. I want my daughter to have a better future. And I believe what I have today, someone in the past have done something right. In business, you don't want big profit in short term. In business, you want moderate profit, but in longer term. Passing on to the second generation, and by the way, I'm the second generation from my mom, to the third, my daughter, hopefully to the fourth and fifth. So bearing in mind this question and the answer before you leave Thailand, we should do our part because we believe in it, not because UN has asked us to do. Number two, why it has to be BPW? I have joined BPW Bangkok before. So I'm very dear, I'm, I'm a member. And I was a member, or even maybe hopefully now a member. Not because it's a trend also. Because I believe in the power of BPW. And I do believe you are here because you know your power that someone has put down at the end of the presentation. We can change the world. And number three, this is very personal. It has to be Thailand. With this topic, you have to be in Thailand. I think the minister has touched from the very beginning. I have to say again, our king, our past king, King Rama the Ninth, have taught us about sustainability, not only in business. And he believes that every life, every business, everything that you do, you want it to be a long term. And so therefore, this is a country that believes in sustainability. Economy-wise, we have gone through many ups and downs. Trade war, conflict, and whatsoever. We are now fighting and fighting. And Thailand believe, with the father of the land, King Ramada IX, and now passing through King Ramada X, that through sustainab sustainability, sufficiency economy, what, uh, that's the lesson from our king, or what we call uh, SDG goal of UN. This is the country where we have already practiced, not only just belief, but real action. And we would like to share our little experience. So allow me to introduce you five women of sustainab sus sustainable development goal of Thailand. Number one, young generation. We have ended the conference, I love it so much, with the future. Shana Kate, actually her nickname is Boy. She is the young entrepreneur chamber, same as young BPW. And she rise up now to be the president of chamber of her province, of her province now. But why Mae Hong Son? Mae Hong Son is one of the smallest provinces of Thailand. Very poor. Very few number of population. But she returned. Actually, she has come from a good business. Very good education. She doesn't have to return to her hometown. But she decided power of the young generation to return and use her business and use BPW or chamber or whatsoever to find the value of her town and bring it up. And she is very successful. So with her, this first lady is a pride of hometown 
Young generation should return to your place. You should believe in your place. Secondly, you should not do it alone. You should empower the community. And thirdly, you have to find your local identity. It doesn't mean that we, when we unite all, all together, we should, become, we should become one. But everyone has to uphold our own identity. Mae Hong Son should be Mae Hong Son. Chiang Mai should be Chiang Mai. Bangkok is not Thailand. Bangkok is only Bangkok. So I have some of her. So that's her. At that time, she was the president of Young, Young, uh, Young uh, YEC, and she embraced her the monk community. That's how we work. This is the picture from Mae Hong Son, rice fields, small temples, and whatnot. So she has done many works, for example, create work, create jobs for the communities. She will go to, to the towns and whatnot. So I'm her showcase. This is her work. I, I did not design this. This is a fabric from uh, the Hill Tribe. But I mean, Hill Tribe uh, fabric, you, you know very well. But how to give more value? So she's the one who tried to connect the designer to the local communities and create more value. And now it's part of her work that um, textile tourism, bring people into the small village, strengthen household economic. So not, not only in terms of fabric, but many other things, I think, similar to what I have heard, great stories around, I mean, from, from our dear members, from every country. The weaving things, uh, so, so many things that uh, the local people uh, have been doing for ages. So going to, so how to find the market for them, how teach them how, 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 how to do the business and whatnot. Also, not besides doing business and business, SDG is about life. So therefore, she has given nutrition knowledge to mother and child, which is very important, which is uh, it's something that they, uh, they believe that if young generation uh, can grow very well and, and have, have knowledge, yeah, um, it will benefit the family. In terms of uh, in the agriculture sectors also, not to, to sell only rice as rice, but the byproduct, the finished product, the agro product, processing uh, product, so that they can sell at higher value. So I, I have heard about the seed storage and f uh, food storage and whatnot. That I will share a bigger story to her. Youth education. I think every, every uh, region talk about education. This is something that we, we also believe in. And education in every hometown. Promote commerce. Second lady. She's not here because she is very busy now. Happened to be my friend, but happened to be one of the more model of the business woman in Thailand. Chadatip Chutakun. She's the board of director of Icon Sayam, which is going to be open. The biggest, hope, uh, this year, next year, supposed to be the biggest investment uh, complex in Thailand along Jaipuya River. If you stay, if you know Oriental Hotel, it's just opposite to Oriental Hotel by Jaipuya River. But why I talk about her? Dream. I remember someone talk about dream. And I think it's very important for our ladies and that Thailand still believe in dream. You need to dream so that you can make more. And she, that is her dream, that her father passed on to her, that we should have a project to change the image of Thailand. People think that big number of tourists coming to Thailand because we are the sin city, because we are cheap, because we have all the illegal things. But I think you are here and you know who we are. So Icon Sayam is a project to change.
the image of Bangkok and the image of Thailand. Sun always rises. I'm talking about this because at the moment, many disruptive. She's going to build the big shopping center. Everyone said that they closed shopping centers in many other countries. It's a sunset industry. So I would like to encourage people. Many times you, you think that you're in the wrong business. Sometimes you may think you're in, the, you're in the wrong country. Or maybe you're in the wrong family or not. Everyone has problem. No one is perfect. So she believed that even shopping center, a center can always be a sunrise business. So she's a living proof, and I believe in her. Many people believe in her. So um, this is another ladies of Thailand that I would like to encourage you. And if you stay long enough, November 9th is the opening of Icon Zayam by the Chao Phraya River. The next person, the third lady, is me. I was thinking whether I should talk about me or not, but, but probably I have to say something about myself. So, I believe in the young generation. I am so glad so many young of many countries are here. And I, I'm quite sure you have many young generation back in your country. Empower them. I used to hear a lot of people say, young generation, they are no good. They don't, they don't work hard. They wake up late. They addict to games. They, they don't want to work hard. They just want quick money and just enjoy life and whatnot. But if you get to know them, if you give them a chance, like what you, most of you, I think maybe all of us are now doing, communicate with them touch their heart. This kind of conference is a is, is this great opportunity where we communicate from heart to heart. Then we know their power. Then we know that they love the country no less than you. So the youth power, the young BPW, the young entrepreneur of chamber, and I think all of the success that we have been doing, especially when I was in, in, in the service of Ministry of Tourism and Sports, actually a lot of them have been done through the young generation, through the young generation. Turn crisis into opportunity, and another thing that I would like to hear more, hopefully in the future, believe in the power of sports. Not because I used to serve Ministry of Tourism and Sport, but I just would like to add in here, maybe you have done that already, but uh, if you are not in uh, sport, we will be one part that can collaborate with you all. This is a picture of, of the uh, province that has been flooded, called Patalung. Patalung was completely flooded. When I was in uh, Minister, uh, Minister of Tourism and Sport, so how to help them? We are not giving them any money because our role is not CSR. Our role is to strengthen them and empower them. So we give them, we arrange a marathon. But it's a special marathon to introduce the local heritage, the local art and craft. That's why we have all the artists there. And bring in people, bring sport there, News will be there, media will cover. So now Patrung recover. Recover with tourists, recover with more business, and the young entrepreneur of Patrung is now, they know what they can do in the future. This is another image that you will not guess what it is for. Have you heard of MotoGP? MotoGP is the motorcycle race, the number one motorcycle race in, Thai, uh, in the world. So we happen, we get the chance to be the host country for MotoGP for three years. So first time this year, just passed. 
we intentionally have MotoGP in the Isan area. So meaning in the poorest area of Thailand. And how can MotoGP help the people? So this is the transportation they use in the MotoGP. Normally, you will not see this kind of thing. This is a local transportation we call Itan. The driver is the farmer. The farmer used their, their, their little Itan to come and take care of international guests throughout the three day race. They feel so proud. But then at the same time, this, they are farmers, actually only farmers. Like, they cannot speak English, but they, they feel very proud to, 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 to take care of, of friends from around the world. So people start to understand what is Isan, northeastern part of Thailand. I chose this kind of thing because some people, the young generation, said that we are coming from very small. We don't have big budget. Many things can be done. This is the local transportation, very cheap. You don't need to have big budget in order to start a project. Use whatever you have. See the value, the identity of many things. Make it creative. And many things can start from whatever they are already. Okay. Last two persons that I would like to talk about, the number four is my mom. You must have great mom like, like me. Don't forget them. My mother, I need to talk about her. She's, she was senator for two times, and she was the chairperson of Toshibai Thailand before me. But I, what I have learned from, from her, and that's who I am today, she believes that everyone was born with a mission. Citizenship duty is everyone's duty. You don't wait for anyone to ask you what to do. And that is what BPW is doing. We are doing our citizenship duty. For, for us, our citizenship uh, duty is bring good things to life. We are not just produce electrical appliance and sell. Our mission is to sell product in order to help Thailand. Red Brick Team is a concept of people. She believes that most important thing in life and most important thing and most difficult thing is people. No one can work alone. So a great leader is a people who can make the team. Red brick team mean, meaning everyone is equally important. The last person, but most important one, that I would like to share with you, and tonight you will feel her presence, is Queen Srikit the king's mother, mother of the land. Because of her, she's the one who always let us know that the forgotten ones never leave anyone behind. So she would go to the hidden places that, I mean, very poor place. She would go to the little things that uh, people probably uh, cannot see value. So in terms of Thai fabric, tonight will be the Thai fabric night. It was because of her. Otherwise, many of those Thai silk will be disappeared for many years ago. And she was the one who traveled around the country, picked up every traditional fabric, every traditional fabric, gave them value. And that's why now all the Thai ladies wearing Thai silk, or wearing what I am wearing today. So tonight, so I end with, with her. This is Galasin uh, from, from, how should I say, one of the uh, poorest uh, province in the northeastern part of Thailand. And Prawa, this is what we call the queen of silk, will be f forgotten and lost if not because of her. So this is Prawa, amazingly. Amazing, I mean, to, to us it's beautiful. And so therefore, tonight, when you can see us wearing the Thai fabric, sometimes silk or whatsoever, do know that this come from her. And not only just to honor Queen Srikit, but to know that 
every fabric is a product of the local people. You are helping the poor women around the country. I believe this is not only the story of Thailand, but it's a story of every country. So I, I have to thank everyone for giving me a chance to be here. Because I want to share the work of our queen, of our king. And I hope when you return to your country, please understand what Thailand is all about. Please be the best ambassador of Thailand. What Thai ladies are all about. We grow with sustainability. We honor everyone. And we do hope that friendship that we have, all the, all the good friends that we have met, will be friends for life for us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your personal as well as national interest in sustainability and defining it in a broader sense, as well as placing the local at the center of it. Thank you for what you do, what you have done, and what you will continue to do. And now let me turn to, could I have your attention please? Could I please have your attention? Shh. Thank you. Now we will hear from Myrna Yao, um, who is the CEO of Richwell Corporation. And Myrna, perhaps you may just want briefly to tell them exactly what the business consists of. And then you can proceed to your talk. Okay. I'll go to the podium and... Okay. Good afternoon to everyone. Actually, my business is all about children. Uh, we distribute about 40 brands in the Philippines, and in fact, we have a, a company in Thailand that also distribute the same thing, like Kiko, like Graco, like uh, all the different toys, Disney, and so many other brands. So uh, in that case, uh, I also expanded to Goodyear Tires in the Philippines and also to, to the women, which is the aloe vera cosmetics from Australia. So uh, I'm managing about five companies now. And I would like to tell you the start of where I came from. Okay, so the lady boss, that's how I... Uh, <laughs> we are all lady boss here, right? <laughs> in fact, I think uh, Irene is the real lady boss in the Thomas, <laughs> big lady boss. I would like to... Uh, Please allow me quickly to show you the UN Sustainable Development Goals that I would like to focus on, which, as, which are the goal number one, number eight, and ten, because I believe that this is, these are the goals that uh, towards achieving all the other goals. I would like to start with the story of when I was 10 years old. When I first so income inequality and poverty firsthand. As a young girl growing up in the province where we have copra, and our province is the poorest province in the Philippines. I saw hardworking women, young and old, carrying sacks of fruits and vegetables to sell every day just so they could feed their families. I remember feeling so much compassion for them and asking God to help me become successful and, of course, wealthy someday so that I could help these women. 
As I grew to maturity, I knew that fighting poverty meant helping the mothers first. I had to think of a way to provide decent work and economic empowerment to women like them so that they and their children can break out of the cycle of poverty. But as you know, we want this all, but we always ask ourselves, how can we do it? It's not easy, it's easy said than done, but not easy to implement or execute. Actually, the motive for my dream was simple. I wanted every child to have a happy childhood. I love children so much and I can see these children doesn't have any opportunity with their mother having a hard time. So the, this dream brought me to the business of where I am now. Thus began my dream and my journey towards becoming a successful businesswoman. As a teenager, I had a knack for business. I buy and sell products. Even when I was in high school, in college, and I make money even though I was very young. When I turned 18, I worked for my father and became this only woman in the commodity trading industry wherein we sell copra. Because being a woman, the man did not see me as a threat and guided me with the market trends. There was no woman at that time in the commodity trading and it's actually uh, dominated by even old men who are uh, experienced. And so I was able to pick up good insights and learn from them. And being a woman did not actually become a disadvantage, but an advantage. And so from there, I was able to bring our company to the top 300 company in the Philippines. And I was only 21. And I was uh, accepted by the women, uh, by the men traders in the industry, the youngest and only woman. I worked during the day while taking up the business management course at night, starting as a micro-entrepreneur. Because, you know, my father is a Filipino-Chinese, so they really doesn't give um, importance to women because they like the men. In Chinese, especially if you come from China, they prefer the boys than the daughters, or the sons than the daughters. And so I was always um, behind, and, but that challenges me to work harder and prove myself. In fact, when my father died, he said he cannot believe that a daughter can be better than a son. <laughs> and with God's help and guidance, I, I was able to scale up. And, um, I started as a micro-entrepreneur with 100 US dollars. I was able to turn around the uh, buying uh, different kinds of products by myself. And uh, today, our company has over 2,000 employees and continues to grow <laughs> from a micro-entrepreneur to a large corporation. In fact, I have a company in Thailand and employ 300 employees. And I will see, but you know, my dream never stopped. I had to work hard, but still going towards the dream that I want to reach. And after establishing a successful business, I was appointed by our president, Lori Macbagal Arroyo, to head the Philippine Commission on Women because she said she need an entrepreneur to help the women fish by themselves and not depend on grants and charities. But you know, during my time, the first thing that I did is that 
um, actually they were saying that Filipino Chinese, how can a Filipino Chinese lead the Filipino women of our country? But our president believed in me and supported me. In fact, the first thing that I did is to have the Magna Carta Law of Women pass because the Magna Carta Law of Women has been there for eight years and it's not moving in Congress because they believe that this is not a priority. So that's the first thing that I did and talked to the president that, ma'am, we have to support this, especially during our term. And the... Um, she did some, you know, um, challenges that I had to pass through before this was approved by Congress. And it happened that I was able to do everything she requested and the Magna Carta Law of Women was passed in Congress during my term. And this is an achievement for the women because it's not only that we guaranteed equal rights and protection, but we were able to get 5% of the budget of the national government funds from different government agencies and local government units, that it is now required that 5% of the budget should be spent for women. And that is very important because its funding is always a problem for whatever project that we do. And next, of course, after the law was passed, the next, next thing that I have to do is now go back to my dream on how to help the women. So I envisioned the Great Women Project, which is the gender responsive economic actions for transformation of women. But envisioning does not stop there. You have to act on it, you have to implement it, you have to see to it that your vision and your dream is happening, right? So I went to the president, I said, ma'am, this is my idea. Can I have some funding? And she said, I'm sorry, but we cannot give you the funds because we need the funds more for important programs and projects. So I have to look for funds. So I, I was able to get from the Canadian government agency, SIDA at the time, seven million Canadian dollars to start the funds of my project. It was not easy. I had to pass through like, you know, a needle to be able to get that much money, you know. It's not a, an easy project, and I was able to do it, and I told the president, our president, that mom, since I was able to have some funds, I think you have to also contribute some to it. <laughs> this is very important because um, it matters. It is the everything that we really have to work for, for, the, uh, for economic empowerment of women. So for more than a decade now, this capacity development project has been transforming the lives of thousands of Filipino families. In fact, after the, the term was over uh, in five years, I mean the funding was uh, over because the contract is up to five years, they again gave another eight million to sustain the project. So up to now, it's still continuing. I'm glad that they believe in it. And of course, I would like to say that uh, by, by this project, it has economically empowered women to become self-reliant. Successful women's enterprises, like micro, small, medium, and large enterprises that have local, national, and global reach are now using digital technology. Because, in fact, in the book that I've written that was uh, launched, and I'm glad that Irene was there and one of our guests during the launch, um, we were able to start it and sustain it, and now 
it is aligned actually to the three SDG focus that I mentioned. And by the way, I have to acknowledge Ambassador Delia Albert, who actually gave me the idea to write this book. Because she said, after all of this, Mirna, if you don't put it in a book or on record, then, you know, uh, everything goes to nothing. It has, everything has to be recorded. So to empower, to empower women to become economically self-reliant by providing a platform for them to succeed in becoming entrepreneurs did happen through the Great Women Project. We also applied four strategic steps that I learned from a business background. As a micro-entrepreneur, we taught women how to start up their desired businesses and get it up and running with all the support of the government, including network building, mentoring, and we involve also the men now, which we call the gold, gold negotio in the Philippines, to support micro women entrepreneurs. So uh, in everything that we do, if we don't involve the men, it cannot be done. We have to have them support us. We also have to have stability. We help the women to reach a state where their business would no longer be in danger of closing down. Like in the Philippines, our micro-entrepreneur, the startup business is so big, but it doesn't become successful. So the stability and the support is really needed for con like giving access to markets, continuous training and mentoring, social protection, credit and microfinance, and many others. This is sustainability is very important because this is the state where women entrepreneurs could be stable for a certain length of time, sustaining the gains of business through innovation and continuous improvement. Investing in research when they become big, like we do, and providing incentives, creating new demands, and being ready for growth. I always say, even if you are a micro, if you dream and you think far, you don't, think, you don't only dream and think like having a house, having a car, and you're happy enough. You should think big for what other big corporations are having. It doesn't stop having a car and a house and become comfortable. So we still have to scale up. So in my book, I even put there on how to scale up from being a micro-entrepreneur. This is growing upward from being micro to small to medium and eventually going as far as they dare to dream. Many of the participants are now serving local, national, and global markets with the help of e-commerce and new technologies. Dream bigger and better. Include others in your goal to succeed. When, you vision, when your vision goes beyond your own success, there is a greater chance that you will achieve not only personal satisfaction, but also a better environment for you and for your community. It is, I always believe that, like I remember the owner of Toyota car, he did not think of only making money, but of giving the world a better car, you know? So when you think for other people in whatever you do, actually, you won't notice that everything comes back and benefit you. So I actually want to give a close to most of our participants in BPW, the officers, because I know they believe in this. That's why they are here. They want to share. They want to have something to learn from each other. And then we all grow together, not only for ourselves. But don't be afraid to start now. If this means having to scale up your current operations, 
or go digital to reach a bigger market, now is the best time to start. During our time, uh, because I consider myself a senior citizen, which I am, uh, we don't have much technology, right? But now our young compatriots here are more in an adv ad advantageous situation than us. And uh, so, but we don't stop there. We have to learn ourselves and be young and be part of them. Yeah, almost. Okay. So now I would just like to show you a, uh, the result of a great women project that is uh, one minute, just one minute. So I can end. And so all the lady bosses here tonight, keep on going and growing towards all your goals. Can we show the, okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for sharing that, Myrna. So you have here two women business leaders who are actually very engaged, not just in running their businesses, but in helping others, especially those at the lowest level of micro-entrepreneurship and making them, as you say, uh, more sustainable to scale up. As you said before, Cobb Karn, it's not how much money, it's how long you make money. So um, with the few minutes we have left, I want to ask them um, a couple of questions. Um, everybody sees both of you as very successful. Was there ever a crisis moment in your career? And what did you do about it? Briefly. Kapkarn. OK. Um, we were flooded. You were what? Uh, my companies and nine factories were flooded. Oh. Um, uh, they were flat years ago. That, that's why I say crisis is norm. It happens. So we were flooded. So we were the only brand that were flooded. So no product. So how can we survive? I'm here today. Because of sustainability, the sufficiency economy, we always gloom up dealers. We always care for our young generation of dealers who actually happen to sell every brand. So at that time, when no product, because almost completely wiped out, the dealer said they keep the space for us one year. This is not norm normally impossible because the space in the shop is like gold. Yes. But because they know that we always care, and that's why I say that um, sufficiency economy or sustainable goal is that when you care for people, when problems happen, they care for you. Mm. You, ne you never know when it will happen, but it will happen one day. And so therefore, we were helped by those little dealers. But before that, we helped them to grow. We made sure that every small size, medium size, big size dealer, all of them in every province, they should grow together with us. So we survive. So this is just another example. That, and I never complain why to God, why me? Why only us? But I, I tell myself that I become stronger. I'm wiser. Mm. I will go through many more crises to come, which will come. 
So that's my story. Can I just ask why you were flattened? <laughs> flattened? Yeah. Well, well that, that was one of the year uh, the Thai people will remember, big flooded in Thailand. Ah. And we, 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 we are located before Bangkok. So they have to protect Bangkok. So we, the, the seven, in, we, we have the industrial estate also. So most of our factories are located in that, it, it, it is called Patum Thani province. So they chat, chat Bangkok, which they should do it. So <laughs> we, we are, we are at maybe at the end of the, of the bucket. Yeah. So well, that but happened. you survived it well. But, but national, nas national disaster is one of the crises that I yes. think everyone knows. It yes. can happen anywhere, any place nowadays. Especially now. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, and you, Myrna, I think you have a personal one. <laughs> I think Irene knows me more. Yeah, <laughs> you want to hear this story, okay? <laughs> it will be brief. brief. Anyway, I believe that most successful women, sometimes their husband become insecure. And there is the problem where we have to face as a successful, you know, uh, woman on our own. And Your husband was <laughs> part of the business. Yeah, my husband was part of the business. And but now I'm happy that we're, I was able to get out from, from heat. And I was able to uh, get more of the business because he got more of the money. But as a business person, I, I said, I, I'm all right with that because I can make it big. And now since 2010, when we separated, I doubled the business. <laughs> So I'm much happier. Can I just share that he was stealing from the business. So she had to not only discover that, repair that on the business side and deal with it personally. And now the business is even bigger because he's out of the way. Uh, <laughs> so bravo to you. So I wanted to... Um, Along the way, because both of you have had um, government careers as well as business careers, is there anything you would have done differently at any point in that, you know, journey? Um, Did you want to be an architect at some point? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you, you cannot do what you have dreamed to do, but you can love what you have to do. I, I mean, I, I served the government for three years. Uh, no regret. I learned more. But from my experience from the government side and the private sector side, which I'm now belong to, I would say don't wait for the government. Don't wait for the government. Yes. Okay, you do your part to convince the government and whatnot, but BPW or even the Thai people or the Thai economy. We, we are where we are now because we continue to join hand and work forward. It's our duties. If they don't support us, we support ourselves. The strength of us is because we take action. Don't wait. I mean, of course, we, we ask, we da, 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 whatsoever, but when will we get it, we don't know. No time to wait. And so therefore, my point with uh, no regret from, from what I have heard, I mean, from my ex, uh, past experience, but I learned more that what you want it to be, I want a better Thailand, I want a better world, I have to do it. Great. And you have to do it. Great. Be the <laughs> way you do it. I actually tell women around the world don't ask government and business to fix things for you first. We have to begin with ourselves. Because if we don't push, nothing will happen. And if we push, not only do our personal goals get reached, then maybe the government and business will follow along because they see the numbers and our example. Myrna, what would you do differently if you had your druthers in your long career? Maybe find a better husband. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but sometimes you cannot choose you know it comes and then it happens and then you know the best thing is just to repair and think positive because you know whatever happened i took that as an advantage because i work harder i become stronger and you know we always have to think positive that is how i look at it and the most important thing that I think uh, I did after my term in the government is I think I always think far. So I, I told myself after my, um, my uh, position in the government, I have to do something to sustain that great women project. And the only way I can do that is to go in the provinces to really help the least, uh, the less privileged women in the provinces. So I put up the local council of women that partner with the government. We are the or only organization that has a partnership with the government and NGO and the business sector. And so we are the biggest organization in the Philippines that supports the government, uh, supports the, the, the government supports and at the same time, our chair there is always the mayor of the province who make it happen and who has the budget to give to these women. And these women are institutionalized because the member of the local council of women are the different NGOs in the localities. So she's also happy because she knows everyone. Great, great. Um, I have to tell you that when young women ask me what makes for a successful career, I said, find the right husband. <laughs> because if he's not supportive, then you're not going to succeed. So last question, quickly, what piece of advice, because there are people viewing who are not in this room, what piece of advice would you give to any woman who wants to succeed, you as leaders in business and government? Kupkar. I would say that believe in the young generation. Because if you are here already, you have your strength. But pass it on to the next one. We need a lot of the young ones. And believe me, they are powerful. And they, they love our country as much as we do. And in order to achieve, I would say, it's a partnership, it's a unity. Um, I always say that tourism and sport and or maybe what we are doing is the same thing. It's not, it's not about figures. It's not about how much we make. It's not about GDP. But it's about people to people and heart to heart. I think if we believe in, in a better world, if we believe that our daughters will have a better place, um, we can do it. Believe in the young. Thank you. Myrna? I believe that uh, I actually mentioned a lot in my speech but then I believe that we have to have passion in everything that we do because if you have passion in your work you don't feel that you're tired and you I always feel like I'm on vacation actually <laughs> <laughs> and and aside from having a passion you have to have a I only put it in three words Actually, it's vision, direction, and action. Without the direction, your vision is nothing. You know, it's very important that you know what, how to make your vision work, and then act on it. Wonderful. Uh, you, you have to admit that these two women leaders have been terrific. We are, they are great examples and role models, and they have given us a part of their lives today. So please give them a very warm thank you. So thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh,
ท่านกอบการวัฒนาวรากุลนะคะ Miss m a y a h u y a o and Miss Miss Irene Natividad for the heartfelt and informative and very inspiring talk May I invite k u n j a n Samon w a t a n a w a k i n past president of the Federation of BPW Thailand, to present the tokens of appreciation to our speakers and facilitator after the photo session, please. Thank you. By the way, I have 25 books to spare. Those who are interested to get a copy of the book, you can come and and get the book. <laughs> So this uh, brings the lunch talk to the end. We hope you enjoy yourself and the food. Please kindly make your way straight to the afternoon session, as our schedule is already delayed. Please proceed to the workshop after you finish your meal. Please, as soon as possible. Thank you. So if you're going to the workshop one, the intercultural understanding for business growth, that will be in room 303. For the workshop two, interactive network opportunities, that will be in room 305. And how to dress in Thai traditional costume workshop will be in room 301. Thank you.